Hello guys, what's up and welcome to the new tutorial from the uh, SketchUp Worker Studio. In this tutorial, we will talk about new version of Enscape and it's Enscape 4. So after long waiting, Enscape 4 is here and I want to analyze it on this 3D model in here. So let's get to and jump into it. First of all, this is the Enscape toolbar as you can see in here. And the icons are completely changed and it's much more modern than the other times. We have a start Enscape in here, live updates, synchronized views, Enscape objects as a library, Enscape material library, Enscape material editor, upload management, and some other things related to the setting and license. So I use the trail version only for the uh, tutorial. So in here, if I click on the Enscape objects, you can see the changes on the uh, light icons in here. And the function of them are completely same with the previous versions of Enscape. So I'm going to close it in here and move this Enscape toolbar in this place. So I'm going to press Ctrl S, save my file anyway, and click on the uh, start Enscape in here. The note is Enscape 4 is released for SketchUp 2024, 2023, and Revit 2025. So you can use it in different type of newest versions of 3D modeling softwares. And I'm really excited about it because I'm really one of the big fans of Enscape. So the Enscape new environment loaded for us and you can see what really happened. The control and movement cues are completely same with the previous time. And we can't see any type of unnecessary changes in here. So this is the environment that we have and I want to start from here. First of all, we have home mode option. We have collaborative annotation, as you can see, nothing changed, only icons and color theme change in here. And BIM modeling, it's not working in the SketchUp. We have view management, so if I press F on my keyboard, I can switch in different type of camera angles. So I can click on the edit mode and move in here. Maybe something like this angle is enough for me, something like that. And I can adjust the uh, CAD view name in here. So I'm going to unlink it and click on the new Enscape test and add it to my favorites from here. The X option is about 3.7. 3.7. And Y is your eye height. So I don't want to change all of them because it's not really necessary right now. I only want to uncheck the save Enscape some position and click on the save option. So new Enscape test is available for me. First of all, as you can see, if I click on the Enscape asset library in here, I can see lots of new models which related to the Enscape. And I think it's really incredible uh, because in the previous versions, we have more than 3000 objects and assets. But right now we have some number about more than 4178 HQ objects. So I think it's really wonderful. So for example, I want to start my job with the uh, categories and change it to the people. Click on the uh, tags option in here and change it to the, uh, for example, female in here. And I want to select one of them for the uh, front of this house near to the pool. So I think maybe, maybe, maybe something like this one is not bad, so I'm going to click on it and it takes a little bit of time. Like that and add it to my environment. Click on the selection tool exactly like the previous versions and add it to here. Click on the apply changes to see what really happened. So it takes a little bit of time to add the uh, Enscape asset for you and you can see the result of it in here. And next items absolutely related to vegetations. So I'm going to change the uh, category to the uh, vegetations in here. Click on the uh, multi asset selection tool like that. Click on the uh, bucket selection, select my surface and click on one of these for example, bushes or shrubs or trees in here. So maybe trees are suitable choice for me. And this one and this one. So 
it's added to my scene i'm going to click on the uh, confirm placement and apply changes it takes a little bit of time and another time and escape assets will be load for me like this so it's about the Enscape asset library, so you can select, rotate, and apply it on your 3D model. If I press F, I can turn back to the uh, new Enscape test camera in here. I'm going to click on the uh, save frame in this part of my job and click on the projection and change it to the two-point perspective. It helps you to create more realistic renders in here. So, I'm going to click on the... Uh, visual setting and I start my rendering and see how I can make some incredible renders in Enscape 4 for a SketchUp in here. So I'm going to hold shift, right click and change the time of the day first of all because I really like to add some type of time which related to the morning. So maybe 7.42 is not bad, maybe something like that is good. I'm going to hold Control plus UNI and change the time of the day exactly like this i really like this one so i'm going to turn off the auto exposure and you can see what really happened it's the totally disaster so don't use it try to use auto exposure and my exposure is about 54 percent i'm going to use the field of view and you can see more accurate field of view in the new version of nscape 4 in here 81 is enough for me so uh i'm gonna Increase the depth of field a little bit, turn off autofocus, and play with the focal point. Move it to these edges in here, something like this one. Click on the uh, 10 double zero, and the depth of field is about 14%. I'm going to increase the rendering quality to the ultra mode, but not right now at the end of this video. I don't need to use outlines, I'm going to click on the image, turn on the auto contrast and I want to play with the saturation a little bit, make it more warm than the other times and I need some more warm rendering in my final image so I need to reduce color temperature a little bit, maybe 5200 Kelvin is enough, motion blur is not really useful because we don't create any type of animation. Bloom option can be decreased to the uh, 6% and lens flare is about 32%. Wignate is about 20% and chromatic aberration is 0. Click on the atmosphere, it's about the fog option. I don't want to use fog option because I need sharp render. Some brightness can be decreased a little bit, about 50%. Night sky brightness not really useful. Shadow sharpness, I need some soft shadows, so maybe 10% is enough. Artificial light brightness not really useful. Ambient brightness not really useful, but you can increase it in the exterior renders a little bit, not too much. And wind option is not really helpful. One of the new features in Enscape 4 related to the wind option. In the previous versions, you can't change the wind direction angle only in the animations and water texturing but right now you can increase the wind speed about 30 and play with the uh, direction angle it's not really feeling here because we don't have any trees in this place and last item related to the sky setting i'm going to click on the sky setting change the source of my hdri to the white cubes play with the rotation i want to see some of these white cubes in the back side at the left of my camera so 78 degrees enough moon size is not really helpful in here but i need some clear sky so i decide to reduce the cyrus amount variety and density so as you can see the things is happening here and we have some blue clear sky much realistic than the other times so in the output, everything is done. I'm going to change it to the Ultra HD and rendering quality on the HD. And I'm going to minimize and skip at the right side, sketch up in the left side. Now I want to play with the materials in Enscape 4 to see what really can be done for this image. First of all, I'm going to click on the uh, Enscape Material Editor. So, Enscape Material Editor. I'm going to click on the Enscape Material Editor, Paint Bucket in here. 
click on the in model textures click on the sample paint pick this cement up in here and i can click on the texture change it rotate it but right now everything is fine so i'm going to change it to the backward i want to make it a little bit more white than the other times so tint color help you to do this job now my tint color is white color and this is the new update in Enscape 4 you can see your colors in three type of systems some type of palette system hcv or rgv system and this type of color wheel system so it completely depends on you it's not really complicated i'm going to click on the rgb my tint color is white so i'm going to reduce the image fade and you can see what really happened on your texture it go more and more white so 76 percent is enough for me in here or maybe 82 percent is enough Everything is done in here. I can reduce the roughness a little bit to make a little bit reflection on my cement surfaces. For example, 62%. Next item which is really important for me is these bricks in here. I'm going to click on it. Brick selected for me. I'm going to click on these three points in here. Replace with end skip material. And I want to select another brick, for example, this one or brick worn in here. I prefer to use brick worn in here and it takes a little bit of time for applying and after that you can click on the replace so i'm going to click on the replace save and continue it takes a little bit of time and new brick worn out replaced for us something like that so as you can see when i focus on these brick in here i can change the uh, displacement map and you can see the changes in here i want to sorry i want to reduce the depth of field to show you how exactly it works so it's about displacement map and you can see something like displacing happen on your surface so you can control it 1.6 is enough so 0 0.16 i'm going to add it to my job and i can click on it and increase the size of it 1.6 and another 1.6 in here so everything is fine in here and i want to press f change it to this part of my job close it turn it back and now i can touch the roughness because bricks don't have any type of reflection in the real world so something like that is good for me play with the angle like that and i want to make this fences in here more metallica than the other times so i'm going to click on the sample paint select these fences in here the color of them are something like black or silver i can select it from the new color palette in here as you can see when you click on it it get darker and darker so you can play with it like that the color of it is fine i can reduce the roughness about six percent and metallica about 66 percent and the specular bar is about 66 percent everything is fine in here next item which i really like to change it is about this floor in here i can select it don't worry about the texturizing it and reduce your roughness as you can to create some reflective surface it's really important in your exterior renders to make one of your surfaces a little bit reflective 22.4 is enough Metallica is about 3 and if I reduce the image fade I can make it more brighter than the other times and now it's much better than the other times so it's something like that click on the texture size I want to make a height of it more bigger than it something like that and everything is fine a specular of the wood I think something like the ceramica so I'm going to type 56 percent in here Next item is the water, one of the most important and valuable textures in the 3D rendering. First of all, I want to click on these tiles in here. Roughness of them are acceptable. So now I can click on the uh, color A2 in here. Click on the generic, change the type of it to the water. And you can see the changes right now in here. Now we have more realistic water. I'm going to click on the override global wind if you want to apply it on your job. So 
Intensity is about 16%. Direction angle is about 12%. Height map is much lower. If you want to make your water as a mirror, you need to reduce height and scale. So it completely depends on you and your experience and training. I think 16 and 12 is enough for my job. Something like that is not bad. And cosmetic intensity related to the clouds and all light sources reflection on your water. So try to manage it about 88%. And finally, my water color is something like the uh, dark green. Dark green here. It's much better. And I think everything is fine. I only have some problem with these fences in here. So I'm going to click on them and totally remove them. Now I can add just some type of color, maybe like this. And it's much better than the uh, wood fences in there. So I can click on the uh, color L06 in here and click on the type in here and change it to the grass. So I think I can click on the tint color add some type of green color in here you can see how it works it's really enjoyable and make it easy for you so the grass is activated for me height is more high height variation is high and you can see some effects in here and i think it's really interesting for people who like to render their job more realistic so everything is fine in here and i don't see any type of necessary point to say I only have some problem with these glasses in here so I'm going to click on the assemble paint and pick it up change the generic type to the uh, I think generic is good I only need to change the transparency of it from cutout to the transmittance so it's much realistic than the other times now we create glass and I can reduce the opacity 56% one tint color is something like red for example or maybe something like that I can come back to the colors and add some colors like this and I think it's really enjoyable for work for people who are CG designers so opacity is more high I can change it to the 26 and now it's much acceptable so time for the rendering. If I come back to the Enscape environment, this is the final shot that we have in here. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If this tutorial is useful for you, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.